Hi everyone, in this problem we have an infinite sum and we're told it's equal to 2, so that means it converges. Right? Whenever you have an infinite sum and it's equal to a number, that means we have a convergent series and we're asked to find C. Let's go ahead and work through it, so solution. So this is a geometric series and let's go ahead and write it in a way that lets us really identify that. So we're going to start by getting rid of this negative here. This is really over 1. So what we can do, I'm going to come over here and do it, is we can write it as follows. This is the infinite sum from 2 to infinity. And let's bring this downstairs and it'll make the exponent uh, positive. So we have 1 over 1 plus c to the n and that's equal to 2. And now notice that 1 can be really written as 1 to the n because 1 to the n is equal to 1. And so now we can write this as a number to a power. So this is the same thing. I'm going to come over here. This implies that we have the infinite sum. Just trying to save room. And runs from 2 to infinity. And this is 1 over 1 plus c to the n. And that's equal to 2. And this is a geometric series because you have a number being raised to a power. So the number is 1 over 1 plus c. So r here is 1 over 1 plus c. That's called the common ratio. That's the number that's raised to a power in an infinite geometric series. And it's equal to 2, so again, that means it converges. So now we can use the formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series, which basically says that you take whatever number is here and you plug it in here. And that goes up top. So you have 1 over 1 plus c squared. So you just take that and plug it in always. And then you divide. And on the bottom, it's always 1 minus r. So this is 1 minus r, which we said was 1 over 1 plus c. And that's equal to 2. Again, the formula says that you take this number and you plug it in here always. Whatever number is here, if it's a 1, if it's a 17, it doesn't matter. You just put it there. And then on the bottom, you always divide by 1 minus r. Okay, um, let's clean this up. So we can use some properties of uh, exponents here. In the numerator, we'll get 1 squared, which is 1, over 1 plus c squared, like this. In the denominator, let's go ahead and perform the subtraction. Let's think of 1 as 1 plus c over 1 plus c. Then this is minus 1 over 1 plus c. And this is equal to 2. It's running out of room. Let me come over here. So we'll have 1 over 1 plus c squared over, and then this is in parentheses. And then here we have 1 plus c minus 1. So the 1's cancel. We have a common denominator now, so we can just subtract the numerators. So we're left with c. So we have c over 1 plus c. Parentheses. Got to be really careful here in this step. And this is equal to 2. Whenever you have fractions over fractions like this, it gets a little bit messy. Okay, when you divide a fraction by another fraction, you really multiply by the reciprocal. So this is 1 over parentheses 1 plus c squared times, and then this is 1 plus c over c, and that's equal to 2. Right? Multiplying by the reciprocal, boom, it goes away. We have 1 over 1 plus c times c, and that's equal to 2. Let's multiply both sides by the bottom piece. That'll give us 1 equals 2 times 1 plus c times c, right? Just putting this on the left. I didn't write it, but maybe I will here. I'll use a different color. So 1 plus c times c, and then do it to this side too. 1 plus c times c. You see, and then look, the c's cancel, the 1 plus c's cancel. You're left with the 1, and over here we have this. Let's distribute this. Uh, this is 1 equals 2 times 1 times c, so 2c. 2 times c times c, so 2c squared. Subtract the 1, and we get a quadratic equation in c. 2c squared plus 2c minus 1 equals 0. Okay, I'm going to come over here to the left side of the screen and write that down. It's a different color. So we're going to solve this quadratic equation plus 2c minus 1 equals 0. 
So here, let's write down the A, B, and the C. Now, we're using C here already, so I'm going to use C prime. So A is 2, B is 2, and then C prime is negative 1. And our quadratic formula, including our new variable C prime, whoops, didn't want to use X, right, is C is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC prime all over 2A. Okay, so C is equal to, use a different color, so it's going to be um, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of. So b squared, that's going to be uh, 4 minus 4. a is 2, and then c prime is negative 1. And this is all over 2a, so 2 times 2, which is 4. So c is equal to negative 2 plus or minus, okay, uh, this is going to be a positive 8. This is 4 plus 8, so this is the square root of 12 over 4. So this is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Going, going a little bit fast, it's a long problem, over 4. So this is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 3 over 4. Now you can pull out a 2. So you get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 4. That gives us negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. So we have two possible values of C. We have to make sure that, um, you know, is there, uh, is there only one value? Or are there two values? So we need to, to do uh, some, a little bit more work to figure that out. So the question was to find C, but again, we have two choices here, so we need to possibly narrow them down. In order to do that, we need to use some other stuff. So r uh, was 1 over 1 plus c. And because this is a, let me fix this, make it a little bit prettier. There we go. 1 over 1 plus c. Line it up with the equal sign. <laughs> um, so because it was a convergent geometric series, the absolute value of r has to be less than 1, right? That, that's key. We know that because it's convergent. We know it's convergent because it was equal to 2. So um, that's what it means to be convergent if its series is equal to a number. So we need to take both values of C and then plug them in here and see which ones work. So let's take, um, let's first try C equals uh, negative 1 minus root 3 over 2. Let's plug that into R. So R is equal to 1 over 1 plus, and then C was negative 1 minus root 3 over 2. This is equal to 1 over, okay, this is really, I'll, I'll show the step. 1, I'm going to drop the parentheses minus one half, breaking it up, minus root three over two. All right, you can break this up, minus one over two, minus root three over two. One minus one half is one half, so we have, uh, so we have one half, minus root three over two. This is really one over, one minus root three over two. Division is multiplication by the reciprocal, this just becomes two over one minus root three. So what is this? I'm going to put this in my calculator. 2 divided by 1 minus the square root of 3. I got negative 2.73. That's not going to be any good. right? Our r is not less than 1 in absolute value. So this is no good. This will not work. So the, other, the answer should be the other one, <laughs> but let's, let's justify it. Let me use a different color. Kind of an intense problem. Uh, negative 1 plus square root of 3 over 2. Let's check this one, just to make sure it's less than 1 in absolute value. So r is 1 over 1 plus, this is negative 1 plus root 3. Kind of a fun problem, a little bit non-standard. I saw this in a book somewhere. I thought, oh, you know, this looks really cool. Let me try it. So it's kind of fun. 1 over, this is 1 plus. Uh, actually, uh, I'm going to write it as 1 minus 1 half, because that's going to become a minus 1 half, plus root 3 over 2. This will be 1 over. Uh, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half plus root 3 over 2. Using the same strategy, we can write it using a common denominator, 1 plus root 3 over 2. This is 2 over 1 plus root 3. And if you put this in your calculator, let's see what it is, 2 divided by 1 plus square root of 3, I got uh, 0.732, so roughly 
0.732. That'll work, right? That's less than one in absolute value, so all is good. So the final answer, <laughs> the final answer is this one. So C is equal to uh, negative one plus the square root of three over two. That is the answer to, that's a two. That is the answer to um, this question. Let me just make the two a little bit better. There we go, all that work. I hope this video has been helpful to you in some way, kind of an interesting problem. Good luck.